water might be inside the bag. Yes. What was it? A Bible. It's not a Bible, but it? yes. Yes. A nine Bible. It's something more than Of course it would be a nine Bible. But it's not. Oh, no, you didn't, Father. Father, through a curveball. It's actually a book, and it's a liturgy book. It's the liturgy of St. Basil the Great. Anybody know who St. Basil is? Who's St. Basil the Great? Somebody? Boys? St. Basil? Well, Father, he's a saint. Yes. He's one of the three hierarchs. Okay, good. Bravo. What is a hierarch? We say three hierarchs. What's a hierarch? Okay, think about this. There's the deacon, there's the priest, and then there's the hierarch. Hierarch. What does that mean? What is a hierarch? Deacon, priest, Who's on top of the priest? The huh? Bishop. Bishop. So they were bishops. They were bishops, but they were very special bishops because they were incredibly smart and they were really full on top. They had that perfect combination of superior intellect and incredible piety. And so they contributed a lot to the church. What is the name of the liturgy that we celebrate every Sunday just about? The liturgy of... What's that? Saint... John Chrysostom. Very good. The liturgy of Saint John Chrysostom. Okay. I will tell you that this is the liturgy of Saint Basil. This is the liturgy we're going to do today and for the five weeks of Great Lent until we get to Palm Sunday. So the liturgy of St. Basil is a little different than the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. The liturgy of St. John Chrysostom is shorter. What's shorter about it? The prayers in between that the priest reads. And today, because it's the first Sunday of Great Lent, I'm going to read some of the prayers out loud. But because we have a deacon, I'm able to read them with, during the time when the deacon is saying the petitions. But normally, if I was by myself, there was, there's no way that I would say skip them, but I would never skip them. So, the liturgy of St. Basil is not written by St. Basil from the beginning to end. The liturgy of St. John Chrysostom is not written by St. John Chrysostom. What makes them, what makes those liturgies have the names of those specific hierarchs is the fact that they wrote many of the long prayers that are in between that the priest usually reads silently. Okay? So, St. Basil's liturgy is richer, more beautiful and elaborate and theologically rich prayers. And I'm going to read some of them for you today. And it used to be the normal liturgy that was done on Sundays, and then the St. John Christum liturgy was done on the weekdays because people wanted to get out of church early and get to work. But as time would happen, people said, ah, oh, why do we have to have those long liturgies for St. Basil on Sundays? Let's just have a short one of St. John Christum. And St. John Christum liturgy became the normal liturgy that was celebrated on Sundays. But the church said, hey, this liturgy of St. Basil is so beautiful. We can't just not use it. So they use it. We use it on the five Sundays of Great Lent. We use it on the feast day of St. Basil on January 1st. We use it for Christmas. We use it on the eve of Epiphany. We use it on Holy Thursday and Holy Saturday morning. I think that's the 10 that we use it. We use it 10 times a year. Okay? And by the way, St. Basil and St. John Christopher are not the only two people who are liturgies. There's a liturgy of St. Iacobus, St. James, that sometimes is celebrated on the Feast of St. James. There's a liturgy of St. Gregory the Theologian, 
that very few priests know how to do, but that is, there's a book for that as well. But, and then there's the liturgy of the pre-sanctified gifts. Really, the three liturgies that we celebrate, for the most part, in the Orthodox Church. First and foremost, liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. Second, the liturgy of St. Basil. And then the pre-sanctified liturgy, which we celebrate during Wednesdays and sometimes Fridays of Great Lent, and it can also be done at the beginning of Holy Week. And that is different because the gifts are prepared beforehand, on the Sunday before, and then they're, get, they're uh, uh, consumed during the liturgy of the pre-sanctified gifts. Actually, next Sunday, you'll notice I'm going to close the gates during the liturgy, and I'm going to take out a second lamb, Defter Agnos, because we have pre-sanctified liturgy next Wednesday here. And you'll see that I'll do that. So, the main three liturgies that we celebrate during the whole year are the liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, the liturgy of St. Basil the Great, and the pre-sanctified liturgy, though there are other liturgies. But today, on the first Sunday of Great Lent, every Sunday during the Great Lent, we will we celebrate the liturgy of St. Basil the Great. I want you today to listen to the prayers. I want you, because there's a couple of prayers that talk about from the beginning to the end. They're beautiful. They're rich. They teach. If you understand the prayers of St. Basil, you understand Orthodox theology. That's the bottom line. So I'll be reading them in English so that we can understand them a little bit more. Okay? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we'll talk about that later on. At the end of it.